guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to the Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Delighted to have your company. 26th of October, it's a Monday. Dan McManus, Alison McConnell here with me, Peter Martin. You can give us your point of view on the weekend's football. It's Rangers, six points clear after a win over Livingston. Jermaine Defoe, the man of the moment, scoring his 300th competitive goal. Give us your thoughts on it, Rangers fans. Are you absolutely delighted with the way things are going? And what about Celtic fans? The calamity at the back continues. Celtic gifting goal. Goal, Shane Duffy in the firing line and over and above that, Griffiths coming on for a salvage job. Uh, is the league slipping away from Celtic? Give us your views. We'll hear from former Rangers manager Alex McLeish. We'll hear from Celtic legend Kenny Dalglish on the title race. And we're going to hear also from Stephen Robinson, who's been singing the praises of Tony Watts, who was absolutely magnificent for Motherwell at the weekend. And if there's one man we always mention on this show, it's Kenny. Kevin Nisbet, high bees fans out there. Is he the man of the moment for you? Keep scoring and look at Tam's face lighting up when you mention Nisbet. It's almost as if it's Christmas time again. Give us your thoughts on that. If it's your team and you want to talk about them, we'd love to hear from you. Like, share and follow us on our Facebook. And you can subscribe, hit the red button on our YouTube channel. So the title race, the overview on this, as you can see uh, by his big ball face, I think uh, Ruffy is only second away from joining us as well and uh, really it's it's been an incredible weekend Tom uh, you know at the, in the title race swings and roundabouts is going twists and turns but Rangers have the bit between their teeth yep Rangers are really impressive again you know a, a comfortable win at home to Livingston two goals early in the game first 15 minutes game's done you know, and it's a no-stress day for Rangers. You know, they, they don't concede goals. You know, they're very, very strong at the back. And as soon as they go to nil up, they just shut up shot. Obviously, might be a little bit disappointed with the second half performance. You know, not getting a few, a few more goals. But, you know, easy victory. And uh, they extend the lead at the top after, you know, Celtic dropping points. So Rangers are in a very, very strong position at the minute. And also, obviously, looking ahead to next week, they go to command. And they can put even more daylight between themselves and, and Celtic. And that's a huge game for Rangers next weekend. Yeah, hi to David Robertson, he's in Newcastle, Michael Climey, great to hear from you Michael, Charlie Drummond is in sunny Spain, Niall joins us, Ronnie Chapman, Tam Lee, Rob McLean's in, Rob McLean, he's in Hong Kong, uh, I never thought we'd have Rob McLean on the programme, but uh, this is another one from Hong Kong who joins us, um, and he says, clocks moving means... This is on at midnight now. Rob, we're delighted that you could join us. Campbell Michael as well. Sandy Grant, Andy Dunnicky. I'm trying to give as many people a mention as I possibly can. John Kearney is a Rangers fan and, as you can imagine, as high as a kite. And Michael Clymie says, is Tam secretly in love with Kevin Nisbet? I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. And John Cusick is a guy in Brittany looking forward to some good football and some banter as well. So, with that in mind, um, Ali, this title race suddenly has taken another dramatic twist. If Tam's talking about Rangers being comfortable, Celtic are calamitous. I think you, you might look back on, on, on Sunday's game and it, it might well be one of the definitive afternoons in the title race. You, you know, you're minutes away from what would have been a huge win for Neil Lennon and, and a huge statement, I think. Uh, in terms of just turning things round in your favour and then all of a sudden you're pegged back again and the mood dissipates. Uh, you're just back to this, this big grey cloud over the club at the minute and it's it's not going to ease until you get any fluency, until you start winning games. Uh, and crucially what you're seeing just now is a, a defence who are just desperately fragile. They just um, they cannot seem to keep a, a clean sheet for all of their money. I thought the the second goal in particular at Pitorgio yesterday was cheap. Uh, I thought Cham was at fault for, for the opening penalty, for, for the reluctance to track back at first and then the clumsy challenge that gives the referee a decision. And if you're going to concede goals like that, then you're going to give yourself problems. 
Well, Brian Curtis says something. Hi, lads and lassies. Uh, I took a lot of stick on this show after saying Duffy was overrated and overpriced, and now I feel I'm being proved right. Agree or disagree? Because a player comes from the English Premiership, they expect him to be fantastic. It's not the way it works. Um, the league is full of overpaid players. Well, Brian, it's such a good point you make, and I'm, and I'm not going to um, beat about the bush on this, Ruffy. Uh, just quite simply... He doesn't have any options to drop him, but I would drop Shane Duffy in a jiffy because I think he's a bomb scare. And I wasted my time even telling him that. The minute he changed <laughs> his ear, the, the minute he changed his earphones, I knew we were on a hiding to nothing with him. But uh, I'm going to be blunt with you, Tom. Shane Duffy is just calamitous. Every time he gets the ball, uh, you know, I think Celtic fans have got their heart in their mouth with him because he, he, he can't pass it. He certainly can't defend at the moment, and uh, his confidence must be shot. Yeah, he's, he's been a major disappointment, Peter, um, coming up the road from Celtic. Listen, I think every single Celtic fan were rubbing their hands when he came in the door. I think he was exactly what Celtic were needing. We thought, you know, supporters thought that they were going to get a, a real aggressive centre-half up here uh, in the Celtic team to go and win headers and be solid at the back and not give anything away, and he's been the complete opposite, to be honest. You know, he's been fragile. You know, he looks slow, lethargic. You know, he's not up to the pace of the game. And he's diving in into tackles and uh, he's all over the place at the back. So, listen, it's been desperately poor from Shane Duffy, particularly when you, you think the outlay that Celtic are paying. You know, they're probably paying a right good whack of his wages as well and the loan fee. So, he's been a major disappointment. Whether you drop him or not, Peter, is up to Neil Lennon. Um, but he's certainly not earning his place at the minute. You know, another mistake and another, another poor game on Sunday. So listen, there'll be once you get Julian back, once you get Beaton back, um, El Hamed, there's there's going to be options for Neil Lennon to maybe drop him. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure, Ruffy, if you can hear us. I, I, I do just nod your McDonald's hairstyle and tell us if you can, if you can hear us. Yes, we can hear you, Ruffy, but we can't. We can we can hear you, but we we can't hear what you're saying. So it's just the day from hell for us with you, Ruffy. Um, but anyway, Tam came up with a great line there, which is basically um, fragile. That's how Neil Lennon sees it for his defence. I think there's a little bit of fragility with a few of them. They're playing with you know major amount of confidence. Uh, but again, there's plenty of positives. You know. I thought we were a little bit passive first half, final third, because we had control of the game. And the goal we give away is very sloppy. And then the response second half was tremendous. But um, we need to tidy up defensively. We were not to get goals in three games. It's not good enough. Would you drop him, Ali? I'm not sure you can drop him just now because, quite simply, you don't have any personnel there to come in, I think. Mm. If if near Beaton was fit at the minute, I think he would maybe go and, and, and put Beaton in it at centre half. But right now, you have a complete dearth of options. But it's such a, a, a rolling stone almost when you when you have a player who who's completely bereft of any confidence with what, what you're seeing just now. You've just come into a new club. Not only have you just come into a new club, but you've come with a, a particular reputation and you're not fulfilling it in any way. I think he he's not... He's not ignorant and he's certainly not deaf to the criticism that will be going on round about him, Shane Duffy. And I think it just once you start adding to that pressure, it takes a lot to come out of it. I think if you had the personnel, it would possibly be a kindness at the minute to, to take him out, let him just relax, find his feet a bit and then bring him back in. But he can't afford to do that. So quite simply, you have to plod on. You have to try and dredge up a decent performance. You have to try and look towards keeping sheen, clean sheets by any means necessary. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it has to be functional. And the only way you're going to find that confidence and find that momentum is by winning games and trying to shut things up again at the back. I think that he started with a back four yesterday. He actually started the season with a back four and then moved towards a back three. I think you have to stick with that back four and, and, and try and play to your strengths. But the sloppiness that is evident since the, over the, the duration of this season is alarming and you're not going to win a title giving goals like that away. Well, Ian Laurie, I think, makes a very good point. And this is something that's relevant, Tam, that I'll get your thoughts on. He says, I don't just blame Duffy. The big problem for me is Lennon keeps playing wing-backs, which Frimpong isn't. 
we should have had a flat back four um, with Welsh in it right back, <coughs> then Duffy wouldn't be making a ta tackle out wide right. Now, I I'll put this point to Ruffy because I think we can now hear him yeah. uh, as well. Uh, Ruffy, uh, on the basis of the back four, uh, Ian Laurie's mentioned there that it's not just about Shane Duffy. We've all had a say on Shane Duffy right now, but the back four don't defend as a unit. And certainly, I think, collectively, they need help. You know, whether that comes from midfield or whatever, if you've got a calamitous back four, the midfield need to do more as well. Is it just about Shane yeah. Duffy? No, I don't think it is. Uh, I, I just think it's uh, totally... Uh... Not a confident back four, whatever back four it is. I think you talked about Rangers early on. If you look at the Rangers back four, it's been that back four for a long, long time. It's consistently that back four. And everybody will tell you, if you've got a, a back four that get to know each other inside out, you know, you get a lot of strength in that. I just think the Celtic back four, what has it been? It's been Beaton, it's been Julian. It's been Duffy. It's been all over the place. The fullbacks have been all over the place as well. It's just not a settled back four or a back three or whatever you want to call it. And there's no, they, they don't all feed off each other. I mean, as I think it was Alison touched on it there. Some of these goals were an absolute joke. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't think anybody could you know, walk out of that game and look at the goals. You know, obviously Sham for the first one, Duffy for the next one. That for me, the last goal was the worst one of the lot. The boy ran by about four or five players. You're a minute into extra time. Take him out. You know, just take him out. Don't let him go any further. Take that. And it was just that that to me was the worst goal of the lot. Yeah, the other thing about it, uh, and I'm not, I, I don't know where he got it from, uh, Tam. He started talking about it was the poorest, you know, performance of the referee, um, Willie Collum. I didn't think Willie Collum get it. I think Willie. I think Willie Collum got one thing wrong in the game, Tom. I think before Celtic scored their second goal, they should have given a free kick to to Aberdeen because quite clearly yep. the, Aber the Aberdeen player was pushed to the ground. You let play go on. Yeah, but I tell you another thing. He got wrong. He should have sent Callum McGregor off, Peter. And that's a second bookable offence. Surely the penalty, the, the 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 final penalty in the last minute, where he wipes the yeah. boy out. In the box, that, that should be a second yellow card and a red card for Callum McGregor. But it wouldn't have mattered in the whole. You know, it was only a minute to go. But in terms of going forward, you know, it'd have been a bigger blow for Celtic if he gets sent off. So I think while well, he missed that one, um, I don't think he'd done a lot, a lot wrong to be honest as a referee. And uh, I think when you start blaming referees, they've got a problem. I think Celtic need to look at themselves. They need to defend properly. A Celtic team going for the title should be seeing that game out with five minutes to go. Agree with Ruffy. See the game out. You know, they get in a great position, three two up again. It would have been a huge three points after being behind, you know, and a real, real momentum um, for, for Celtic. And they conceded a terrible goal in the last minute of the game through bad defending, nothing to do with the referee. So they've got to tighten up at the back or else Rangers will be out in the distance and, and, and they'll win the league. Yeah, we're going to talk about Rangers. We're going to hear from Jermaine Defoe. Uh, we're also going to hear from Gary McAllister as well coming up. We'll hear from uh, Stephen Robinson about Motherwell. We'll also be discussing him. We'll hear from Jack Ross too on the programme. And we're trying to read out as many of your messages as possible on this one. Um, and of course, uh, Neil Lennon is making excuses, um, blaming the referee, says Michael Climey. Um, he should look at his team. And I think that Michael um, is exactly uh, what I think he, uh, he's going to have to do some of the performances from some of the players. Although on that basis, um, I can tell you Alex McLeish and Kenny Dugleish, two Scotland legends, were out and about today talking. Um, and Kenny Dugleish mentioned that uh, you know there's no need for panic yet. Nothing is decided, and Neil Lennon could still be the man to deliver ten in a row. Listen, if they if they've gotten favourites, fine. Favourites have lost before, uh, but for me, uh, there's a lot of. There's a lot of water to pass under the bridge between now and, and May. So Rangers in a stronger position now this year. I think they're better this year than they were last year. Uh, Celtic have been through a bad spell with Rangers have capitalised on. Um, but he'll get a few players back then and then. When they're at full strength, you can judge. Yeah, well, everybody will get that chance uh, to judge them, Ruffy, because Neil Lennon is adamant that once he gets all his uh, best players in the starting eleven, then things will turn around. Um, Griffiths certainly pushed himself, Ruffy, for a starting position, but if anything, he might need to score three goals because Shane Duffy's an absolute an absolute stonewall certainly at the moment to give away two. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't like. 
Colin Player's name, but as Tam said, he, he looked like a cart horse. He looked well at the pace, you know. And and in that goal, you know, you saw him looking at the goalkeeper. Easy enough just to roll it back to him. I don't know what he tried to do, try to flick it over the boy's head and get done for that. But you're right, you know, and, and, and I would put the, the other centre-half as well, Ayer as well. I think he's all over the place as well. He He's not the player he was last year. He's not the player, you know, that uh, we, we heard there was big teams after him. You know, he's lost a bit of form. So then he, it doesn't matter what players you get back again. If you continually lose goals, like that, you know, and we've saw the strength of Rangers. They're not losing goals. They don't look as if they're going to lose goals. And that's where they're getting their strength from, you know, and uh, it's the exact opposite. But I, I would agree with Kenny. I wouldn't write anybody off just now. I thought some of the reporting, I don't know if you listened to it, the, the, the game, the BBC report of when the, I think it was the third, second goal went in. Is this, is this him out? Is this the end of Neil Lennon? Is this this? It was a very negative uh, report of every time Aberdeen did something. So, no, there's a long way to go for me. I wouldn't be calling for people's heads, you know, at this particular time. There's, there's, there's too many points at stake. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, more often than not, and I, I try and, as a rule of thumb on this programme, not criticise other broadcasters. It's entirely up to everybody to have their own way of thinking on uh, how they broadcast. So I, I certainly don't want to get into a row on what the BBC does or whether they're pro or negative on that. Um, the only time we do uh, leather other broadcasters or something just gets a bit ridiculous. Andy Clark, <laughs> Andy Clark says, um, Ali, that he heard that there was, you know, uh, a big fallout in the dressing room at Pataudry, and he wonders if any of the rumours of that are true. Alison, in football, if you play and you drop points in a title race, if there isn't a full-scale battle and fight and punches thrown in the Celtic dressing room, I would be holding an inquest as to why not. This is one of these things that crops up all the time when you ever have a, a team who are losing, they're in poor form and you have leaks of, of dressing room unrest and, and arguments. Listen, this goes on all the time. It goes on when teams are winning. It goes on when time, teams are losing. Do you have an argument in your workplace? Do you have disagreements with people you work, you work with? Of course you do. We all do. Uh, and like you, I agree. I think if you're not having that after it, then there's something wrong. So I, I'd be surprised if that was a happy bus and a happy dressing room on the way back down from the Torji when you've got yourself back in to a game that you ought to be seeing now, a game that can actually transform your season. There's something wrong if you're not angry and you're not pointing fingers and you're not trying to get to the root cause of it. But it's like everything. When uh, when things aren't going well, people want to look for, for reasons and, and this becomes one of the reasons oh, there's things not going on behind the scenes or there, there are issues going on in the dressing room. There are always fallouts in dressing rooms all the time. It's a fairly common occurrence. Tam will probably be able to enlighten you more than, on that than I can, but you're looking for excuses and reasons. It, 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 it's more complex than that. And once you start winning games, people don't look for anything other than that. Once you start getting points on the board and once you're winning, no, nobody's interested in hearing things like that. So if you if you want to put those kind of stories to bed, all you can do is go out and try and find a bit of form and get back back in track again. But what I found interesting over over the course of the last month or so, probably since the Ferenc Sparrows game, is it's just how little credit Neil Lennon has in the bank. When you consider what he's done as Celtic manager and what he's done as Celtic player, there is there is no currency at the minute for him to to ride through this. There seems to be a a call, an immediate call for him to go and, and for his head. And, and I think you have to trust him in some ways. You have to give him time to try and correct what's what's going wrong. It, it is salvageable. It can be turned around. Essentially, there, there's six points in it. They have a game in hand. There are all sorts of issues that come to play. But I think just now it's far too early to, to be making those judgments. Well, I always go back to what Gordon Strachan used to say on countless occasions. You know, you're absolutely right. But the 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 loudest roar is coming from the most negative people, Alison. It's it's very difficult to even quantify at this point how much of a percentage of Celtic fans are looking and saying get Neil Lennon out. Uh, I mean, as Gordon Strachan used to say to me when I worked for Radio Clyde, if two guys phone in and say Gordon Strachan's a diddy, does that mean I'm a diddy? You know, he he. he you know, it doesn't matter if, if two people, irate people, come on and call for Neil Lennon's head. There could be other people there who might well look at it with a calmer uh, outlook and say, OK, long way to go. 
he certainly, I know for a fact, the board is certainly not going to pull the plug at this point. And you're right about, you know, everybody falls out in workplaces. If Fruffy was in the studio at four o'clock, I would have scalped my microphone right over his head and the two of us would be on a full <laughs> scaler with, with Tam trying to draw us apart. So these things happen. That's the nature of it. We've been like that for nine years. Um, anyway, um, one thing I think we're not going to be guilty of in this programme is not giving Aberdeen credit because... At the very least, Tam, I thought Aberdeen deserved a draw. Yeah, I thought Aberdeen were excellent, Peter. You know, and I said it was a very, very difficult game for Celtic to go up there and get the three points. Um, I thought Aberdeen were aggressive, you know, right in Celtic's faces. You know, it looked as if it was a windy day up there as well. It wasn't a day for pretty football. And uh, McCrory and Ferguson in the middle of the park were in there snapping at Celtic's heels. You know, they were a threat going forward. And pretty solid at the back. So, listen, it would have been a huge win for Celtic. But you've got to give Aberdeen credit. I thought it deserved a draw over the balance of the whole balance of the game. I thought Aberdeen were worthy of a point. And uh, Derek McInnes will be delighted with that performance. Yeah, the other thing about it, Derek McInnes was raving about was, of course, the performance of one Lewis Ferguson. But we were driven on by Ferguson. The boy is fantastic in every aspect. He's... When he, he's, he makes a difference, and when the game is subdued, he goes, makes a run beyond, he gets a penalty, he takes a penalty, he scores a lot of pressure on that last penalty there, he, he tucks it away nicely, but he was driving us on. For somebody so young, driving us on, is, we're very fortunate to have him. Yeah, I mean, Ruffy, he's another boy that yeah. I think, you know, I, I, I was raving about him last season, started, I was raving about him this season, he... he will be attracting the the interest of Steve Clark as well. But again, you know, yet another midfielder. Yeah, but in the window there, we were talking about our two big clubs, you know, dipping into their piggy bank. You know, they, they, they keep going for these foreign players who come in and take time to settle, or, or that's what they're, we're led to believe, or he'll take time to settle. You've got a ready-made guy in there, and I know Celtic played a few bob for Turnbull, but I, I think this boy comes into the same category. I think he's worth the punt at the same money compared to what you might get abroad. Uh, and you know what you're going to get. And year on year, he's just got better and better. And you can see why the Aberdeen manager is absolutely raving about him. He would enlighten any uh, of our two teams, Rangers and Celtic. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Ronnie Porter says, Peter, when I played amateur football many moons ago, he says, my teammates would be creating havoc in the dressing room, as would our trainer. Sir Alex Ferguson must have borrowed the hairdryer from our dressing room. Yeah, plus Nick is on, you know. If, if you know what your football, if you played football, fights happen. Even when you're winning games, fights happen. If somebody gives away a goal that you're not happy with. But um, listen, we try and deal with the here and now and the facts. Aberdeen, more than worthy of the draw. Don't think the referee um, was anything to do with the overall outcome. I thought he got a couple of things wrong, but they were certainly in Aber should have been in Aberdeen's favour. You can give us your thoughts on it as well. Um, from the, the madness of a six-goal thriller at Pataudry, it was a little bit more, not so much pedestrian, but Rangers certainly in cruise control, getting uh, a 2-0 win over Livingston. And if you're talking about great goals, Tam, Jermaine Defoe's goal was an absolute peach. To take <laughs> that, to take that on his weaker foot, if there, if there is such a thing with Jermaine Defoe, mm. but to take it, all, and he hasn't even broken stride when he places mm. it into the net, coming over his head. What a goal that was. It was a fantastic goal. He's, he's a superb player. Um, he has been for 15, 20 years. You know, he's, he's now getting to the latter stages of his career. He's fit as a fiddle. You know, and that's a lesson for other people. You know, he's been out of the team for God knows how long. You know, weeks and weeks, maybe months. He's not played a game. And they came straight in and he's still late sharp as attack. And that's because he looks after himself off the park and he trains hard. And he's ready to come into the team and play for the start. And I don't think that's the same across the city, Peter, at Celtic. I think there's guys who are, are still not fit. And Jermaine Defoe, at what, 38, 39 years old, is still absolute peak condition, ready to play when he's called on. And I think that's a big, you know, that's a big thing for Rangers. His goal was different class, you know, nonchalant, just passed into the net. Wonderful goal. And he's just a great, a great professional and a great player. And others should be taking note of what he's doing and how ready he is to come into the team. Yeah, here's how Rangers assistant Gary McAllister uh, made of all this. Well, we, we, we tend to try and keep our focus here. We get, we, we, it's, it's very difficult to stay away from, from getting to know the result. But... We're trying to keep that away from the players as much as possible. To be tunnel visioned and just doing their job, you know, because the job was to get three points. 
Yeah, I, I think Gary McAllister, again, continuing in that line, Alison, which Stephen Gerrard uh, talked about after defeating Celtic last weekend, which was basically they've got to try and focus on one game at a time now so as not to get ahead of themselves the way they did last January. And I, I definitely see a different mentality. Well, what you're seeing over the course of this week is just a, a glimpse into maybe that new mentality and the new psychology. If you look at the week that's just been, it's three wins out of three, three very big wins. They've opened up that gap at the top of the league. And, and it's quite clear that they've, they've reflected on what happened after Christmas and after coming back from Dubai. And, and in many ways, these are the games that will count for Rangers. I know you can't detract from just how big the the games against Celtic will be and there are so many points that come from there. But what really let Rangers down over the course of the last two seasons is a, a crippling lack of consistency of not being able to string successive wins together. And, and what you're seeing is this season, they're coming out of big games, but they're maintaining the, the same rhythm. They're going on, they're scoring goals they're, and they're, they're clocking up the points. Now, only time will tell if you can sustain that over the next seven or eight months and keep it going. But but the the signs that we're seeing just now is that there's a different psychology within the dressing room. And when you marry that to the fragility that you're, you're seeing at Celtic, then what you've got is a team right now that are blossoming with confidence, with self-belief. If you go into that dressing room just now and ask the question, are you capable of winning the league? I think you're going to get a resounding yes. And that's been played out in the manner of the performances just now. Yeah, uh, Hugh Hepburn Duff says, it's all about what Rangers do now, Peter. Uh, William Beck says, Jairs are playing like a good team. Uh, and I think that's the echo, uh, the sentiments echoed by so many um, and so many people um, mentioning um, the, the performance of Rangers. And, and one thing we can't forget about is the fact that we were waxing lyrical there, Tom, about uh, Jermaine Defoe's goal. Ruffy, it was an absolute peach of a goal. But yeah. this is a boy, Ruffy, who scored... 300 goals, competitive goals, and he, he's not a bad backup to have if somebody else isn't scoring. Oh, it's a fantastic buy. You know, the, the, we saw the goals that he scored down south, and uh, obviously the manager knows him inside out. You know, he knows what he can bring. He knows he's a top class professional. He knows if he's going to be sitting on the bench, he's not going to be champing his door and complaining. He's going to just do his tuppence worth whenever he's called upon. And that's what he's done since he's come up here. Uh, I think we're missing as well, Peter, we're missing the Tavernier pass for that. That was an absolutely fantastic ball over the top, you know, and he just had to walk onto it. Uh, and it just shows you the kind of form that he's on just now as well. He's top notch. But I, I would say that the, the way things have changed a wee bit, Peter, well, Celtic success for me was all about what was on the bench. What was on the bench and what was coming off the bench where Rangers didn't have that in their locker. Rangers have that in their locker now. Rangers have a bench that can change games. They can have a they have a bench where a Rebo can come in and Defoe can come in and Hadji can come in. They've that's where they've strengthened for me. And if it's not going well on the park, you know, you get two or three on. And that's a lot of their success this year as well. Yeah, and here's what Defoe makes of scoring three hundred goals. It was obviously special to before the game actually forgot, to be honest, which is a good thing because if I was sort of like thinking about it during the game, maybe that goal would come. Maybe you snatch out a chance, but it was it's, uh, when it went in, I was delighted because obviously to score that goal, goal, to score a goal like that, and even at the time I didn't realise it was a three hundred goal. But when they reminded me after, I was sort of like I was delighted because you know I enjoyed it. it was a good goal. Yeah, great, great goal and great way to commemorate 300 as well. And obviously, uh, Rangers commemorated it by telling the gardener to go out and stick his. Um, lawnmower on just as the interview was being uh, <laughs> at the side of the park. Anyway, couldn't make it up. Um, apart from anything else, um, Rangers favourites for the title? Former Rangers boss Alex McLeish certainly thinks so. I believe they can do it because uh, the, the recruitment in terms of the strikers has been good. I, I think that's been missing for the last couple of years. It maybe it wasn't in... in uh, Stephen's capability to do it, you know, in terms of finance or whatever. But that has certainly raised the bar for me a, a little bit, and it could be a bit of a game changer for in terms of the title this year. Well, you can give us your thoughts on that. Um, 
Favourites for the title, Ruffy? Yeah, Favourites for the title at this precise moment in time. They're the team on forum. Uh, they'll be looking over at, the, at Celtic and seeing their failings just now and they'll be saying to themselves, let's kick on. But as Alison said, there's a lot of games ahead. You know, they've got Kilmarnock coming up, which has been a wee bit of a bogey team for them. So if they can get over these hurdles, they've got to be favourites at the moment. Alison? If you're looking at a snapshot of the, the last month, you, you have to say they have the momentum and they have the bit between their teeth. The question now is whether or not they can sustain that. Tom? Yeah, I think Rangers are favourites to win the league. I think they're playing the better football. They look as if they've got a strong squad. Defensively, they're solid. You know, the, the manager knows what he wants to play. 4-3-3 doesn't change it. They're all well well versed in what they need to do on and off the ball. They look a very strong outfit at the minute and in Europe as well. So I think Celtic need to change the momentum. They need to do something to change the momentum. And uh, whether that's changing the system, you know, or changing the manager, you know, I don't I don't know what it is, but I think at right at this precise moment, you think I think the Rangers are strong favourites to go on and win the league. Okay, um, Kevin McManus says no chance. Peter, it's October. Uh, Alison Sarah Carroll says Celtic will bounce back. Um, lots of people giving their uh, thoughts on this. But as we uh, know from many a year, uh, nobody hands out trophies in October. But boy, as the weeks go through the twists and turns, it's certainly enjoyable. Certainly enjoyable reading uh, a lot of these uh comments that are coming in. We try and read as many as possible, as many of the sensible ones as possible. And I just try as the thousands of them float by to ignore some of the mad ones that sneak in every now and then. Don't forget to like, share and follow us on our Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, here's how those two results fared in the rest of uh, the weekend's Scottish Premiership uh, games. Of course, there was a postponement between St Mirren and Hamilton. Uh, St Mirren have taken action on that. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, Hibbs got that 1-0 win. It was a great win for Motherwell against Ross County um, and it was still made between St Johnson and Dundee United and I have to say uh, of those games on the Saturday I was at Fir Park to watch Motherwell and a rampant Motherwell um, take care of Ross County and I have to say Ruffy it's the best performance I've seen from Tony Watt in a long time. He held the ball up, brilliantly brought his teammates into play. He scored a great goal uh, he won a penalty for Motherwell and he had two goal line clearances. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for from a centre forward, Ruffy. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think the Motherwell manager said he was unplayable uh, when I saw the highlights. Uh, I could see what he, he, he meant in that. Yeah, but he's like any striker. You know, you get a goal early on in the game, your confidence grows, and uh, I think we all know he's got something. He, he's just not done it consistently, and this might. Well, we all said, oh, he needs to find a club. Maybe we a manager to put his arm around him and encourage him and tell him how good he is. This might be the club uh, if they can get more out of him because there's no doubt about it. He's he's out. He's got quality as a striker, and this might just kick start his season. Well, uh, as the manager mentioned, you know he needs to be loved. He, you know. Many a striker needs a pat in the back, um, but Stephen Robinson didn't hold back on the qualities that Tony Watts uh, possesses. That's the best all-round performance. When he come, he wasn't fit enough. He told me he was. He told me he was fit enough pre-season. He wasn't. Um, and now we've finally, I'm sure he'll admit that, we've got him to the levels of fitness that allows his talent to shine. And it's now just keeping him in the team, keeping him fit, keeping him pushing himself. Um, there's a very, very good footballer. There's never really been any doubt about that. So... We're pleased for him. He's a, he's a good boy as well and he's bought into what we're trying to do and you know he's a big asset for us at the moment. He's only 26, Tom. Yeah, I think the only, the only person to, that can keep Tony Watt playing at that level is Tony Watt. You know, it's nothing to do with managers now. You know, I've been in a similar situation myself as a striker. You know, you're, you're bouncing about clubs and sometimes you can blame managers and blame the formation and blame everybody else but I think deep down you've got to look at yourself in the mirror. As Rob, Rob Robinson said there, he's, Tony's not been fit enough. You know, and that's probably been Tony's main issue, is keeping himself fit. And uh, if you come into a club and you think you're fit and the manager doesn't think you're fit, then that's a problem. So he's obviously went away, he's worked hard, he's got himself fitter. And uh, it's time for Tony to kick on now. 26, no a kid. Uh, he's got a great opportunity now, he's got a great base at Motherwell. You know, the manager's praised him. It's important that he goes to Livingston next week, plays well again. And uh, he keeps consistently performing well, because if he lets his standards drop, lets his fitness drop, He'll be back out of the team again. So it's up to Tony now. His ability's never been in question. 
Um, he's just got to get his head down now and uh, churn out consistent performance. He's scored goals every week. And if he does that, he'll be a massive asset for Mullow. Yeah, wise words from Tam, Alison, because quite simply, I know Tony Watt doesn't want to be defined by one goal against Barcelona. You, you can appreciate he must probably be sick of being asked about it. it, it it's a goal when he's long hung up his boots that'll, that'll live with him, it'll define his career, but it, it came so early for him. I think he was 18, 17 or 18 when that, that goal came, but ever since then, he, he's never really fulfilled the potential that he, he showed that night. And you don't want to look back and think at, at 18 years old, I had all this in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking, Alan Anderson says, hopefully Tony Watt goes from strength to strength. He has lots of qualities as a striker. A, a great point that you make, Alan. Stephen uh, McNamara says, Craig Whiting deserves credit too. Um, he had a cracking finish on Friday night. Hat trick against Wraith. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, these are young boys that show great potential, but just potential in the odd flash of genius or quality, Tam, is not what it's about. It's about consistency. Yeah, it is. Listen, coming from a striker who had, I think, 13 clubs the last time <laughs> I counted. Um, listen, you've, 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 got to, you've got to be consistent in your performances every week. You've got to go out and play well every week. You know, you can't have a couple of good games and think, right, I'm, a, I'm in the team, you know, that, that's me, and then let your standards drop because you'll be back yeah. out of the team. And uh, so in terms of Tony, he's just got to keep his fitness the way it is now, play every week and play well. And uh, if he does that, he'll never about the team at Mother. I love the way you're smiling there, Tam, because in that one answer, it's almost as if I could see your head going back 13 clubs. <laughs> and w if, if there was one point, Tam, that you wish you could go back to, where there was somebody giving you advice, can you remember that day and you, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I, wish I, I wish I'd have done it there? I think there's been lots of managers, Peter, who've, who've took me aside and told me what I had to do and I've ignored it. And I've soon yeah. found myself out the door. And you, you, listen, you don't get second chances in your career. You know, you look back at it and you think, I should have, I should have worked harder there. I should have knuckled down. I should have listened to him. And then you, you, you know, you'd maybe have done better in your career. So I don't want Tony to get, have the same regrets or disappointments that I've had. I hope that he goes and now fulfills his potential because we might be talking about Tony Watt at 33. You know, having 20 clubs and thinking he's still got potential. He's still got, uh, you know, he's got to do it now. And uh, I hope he does yeah. for his sake. Well, as Alice, uh, as Alison mentioned to us before you come on, Tam and, and Ruffy as well, you've got until March here, and then we'll make the big call on it and whether you're, you're up to the mark. It's as simple as that. You either, either, you either knuckle down and give, give us some call. I'm listening to everything you're or, telling me, Peter. Or, 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 yeah. or, you'll hear, or you'll hear that line that the number six heard. That's all I'm saying to you. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> apart, from any, apart from anything else, what a week it's been. I did laugh, actually. Uh, the bold Baz is now on Rangers TV as well. So he's, he's embracing them all now, Tom. I don't he know what he's a mercenary. He was on. Oh, he's, he's on everything now. He's, in, he's oh, yeah, listen, there's only a matter of time before he joins Al Jazeera. He's taking the blue it's, pound. It, it's us. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and good luck and good luck to him as well. We want him to do well. Anyway, St. Johnson, Dundee United, Ruffy. Um, Mickey Mellon just keeps saying, you know, uh, McNulty, Shanklin, Clark, they all come good in the Premier League. But I think, you know, it, that's going to be the real test. We were wondering if Shanklin and Clark could take that step up and get those goals. Everybody was hoping they would. That's what we need to see from them. Yeah, I think the manager would be hoping the three of them would come up with the goods with the teams that are around about them in the league. Uh, OK, scoring against the bigger clubs is a is a harder deal, but you would certainly, they three in particular, would be able to score against the Kilmarnocks, the Hamiltons, the Ross Counties and, and the like, you know. But uh, I think it'll, the time will come for, for them. But the, the worrying thing for me, for Dundee United, the star man every week is the goalkeeper. Uh, and that says something. You know, that uh, they're not doing something right somewhere. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he would rather talking about the three strikers you're talking about than t talking about the goalkeeper every week. So, no, that, I mean, Tam always thought they were a top six. I couldn't see that. I, I thought if they were just, just touching on it would be a good year for them. So maybe I don't know what his objectives are, but certainly I don't think they'll get relegated or anything like that. But uh, I don't see them as a top six team. 
Yeah, thanks to Dan Jimmy, who sent us a message on Facebook. I'm not sure if he's a, a hippie. I think he might be a Hibs fan, if my memory serves me correct. And he says, uh, Tam McManus was a good wee player, uh, but a total bum. And I think that sums up basically uh, Tam's <laughs> career. To be honest with you, I think you've I think you've encapsulated everything there, Dan, in what yeah. he was all about. You're absolutely right. Can I disagree uh, with that? You can't. You can't, you can't, you can't even, uh, Ali, as you know yourself, you can't get it for defamation of character because I think he's nailed it in a simple sentence. I was going I'm to ask. I was, I was going to ask Tam. I was going to ask Tam when the four scored these three hundred. Did Did you remember your thirtieth? <laughs> I, I came I came after I was there, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. It just shows you I mean, it just shows you three hundred goals for Jermaine Phenomenal. Depot, you know. I mean the Tottenham fans loved him. He was great at Portsmouth as well. Um it, Sunderland fans loved him too. I mean he's just a, a, an absolute class act on and off the park. If ever a footballer, mm. if everybody mm. wanted to learn a lesson on how to conduct yourself on and off the park, I mean, last week, again, yet again, I, I should have mentioned it on countless occasions, but, uh, you know, Marcus Rashford uh, certainly once again excelled as, uh, as one of those people you would hold up as the perfect footballer for someone to idolise, a kid who wants to look at someone and how they conduct themselves, Marcus Rashford is an example on and off the pitch. And of course, Jermaine Defoe, you only have to look back at his career, a wonderful example on how to um, apply yourself, how to conduct yourself, and of course, the proof in the pudding, scores a 300th goal. Magnificent. Um, Kelly Nil Hibbs one time. Um, you watched that game. Your man, your favourite man, Nesbitt, scored the penalty <laughs> stroke. He's, he stroked it away nicely. Um, should we be waxing lyrical about the Hibbies again, keeping a clean sheet? <laughs> yep, yeah, I think Hibs. It was a very, very. It was a poor game, Peter. To be honest, but I think on that surface down there, it's always never going to be a classic game. It was very, very scrappy. I think Hibs had the better chances throughout the game um, and deserved to win the game. Uh, Kevin Nisbet was was excellent again. He's, he's, his link up play is getting better every week. His vision, you know, his touch. And uh, he's tuck, he tucked his penalty away well. So, But I, I just think Hibs look very, very solid at the minute. They don't look as if they're going to concede a goal. You know, Ross County the week before, again, gave very little away. Ross County, I can't remind having a clear-cut chance. Kilmarnock uh, on Saturday, I can't remember them creating a clear-cut chance. So they're defending really well. And, and we were talking about earlier about back fours and back fives. You know, that Hibs back four of, uh, of Stevenson, uh, Porteous, Hanlon and, and McGinn has been there all season with Marciano behind them. That's been a consistent all season. And uh, if you can pick the same back four, back five every week, then it's going to pay dividends. And uh, they're, they're playing really, really well at the minute. Lee, Lewis Stevenson came off, I think, with an ankle injury, so he might be doubtful uh, for the semi-final, which would be a blow. But young Josh Doig would, would slot in there. So everything's everything's great. Every, everything in the garden's rosy. Uh, it happens just now a big game uh, against uh, the Jambos coming up. Yeah, Jack Ross says that the training is paying off for everyone. And our record this year is very good. Number of clean sheets, defensively in general. And, you know, two, two back-to-back away clean sheets is very good. And individually, they've all performed well because they've played in their back three or back four at times. Or I should say four or five, Rofi. Um, and they're good. They're in a good place. And um, I think you see the fruits of that hard work that we've put in the training ground in terms of their performance level. Yeah, OK, so the Hibbies are looking good for this semi-final. Tam, we will get closer to the semi-final and get your thoughts on it. Just quickly, Alison, on Hearts or Hibs, where's your money? I think you've got to fancy Hibs, just the fact that they, they've, they've done so well since the season started. They, they look settled. Hearts have, are, have just started their season. They've not played a lot of football. I think, uh, I think my money would be in Hibs for this one. Yep, um, we'll get Ruffy's thoughts on it a little later on as well. If you want to listen to us later on in the week, it's a great chance for you on Friday to hear Tam and Ruffy say, I think Hibs will win. Um, so <laughs> hang on for that. Oh, you've only got, another four, <laughs> only got another four days for predictable punditry. It's a special feature we have from two ex-Hibs players. Uh, I wonder anyway, who you'll be tipping. Tipping. Yeah, I'll be going for the Jambos. You can get it, you can get it here now. <laughs> I'm going to get the sandwich after you, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'm just going to make I'm going to make sure that Tarsten Shaw is neat and tidy in her seat, she's, and she's warm. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll find out on Friday. Um, apart from anything else, uh, some great performances. I mean, some great goals scored this weekend. Great performances, but is it enough to get in Gabriel Antoniazzi's team of the week? 
Ophir Marciano made several saves to earn his side a huge three points at Rugby Park. James Tavernier grabbed another assist after a fantastic crossfield pass. Stephen O'Donnell got forward but ensured his side kept a clean sheet too. Nathan McGinley delivered a perfect cross for Motherwell's opener. Ryan Hedges was full of energy and grabbed a crucial goal too. Lewis Ferguson has nerves of steel from the penalty spot and is now the league's top scorer. Tom Rogic was back to his smooth best for Celtic, creating two goals. Yanis Hadji had his best game of the season with tidy passes and creative through balls. Joe Newell has been a revelation for Hibs this season and drove his team on again. Jermaine Defoe scored his 300th career goal with a lovely first time finish. Tony Watt was outstanding for Motherwell, scoring and creating goals. What an interesting selection there. I mean, a good job he had Tony Watt in and I was going to have a strong word with him because Watt was outstanding. Um, interestingly enough, he, he put Tom Rogic in there. Um, I don't know. Uh, any arguments, Tom? Paul Hanlon should have been there. Paul Hanlon was brilliant on Saturday for Hibs. Solid. Good yeah. to see Marciano in there. Um, I was all known as Joe. He's a, he's a top keeper. Um, but, but apart from that, you know... <laughs> Apart from that, yeah, I, don't, I think he's got it spot on. He's not having it. By the way, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Tom, you don't want Pat, you don't want Pat Stanton and Jimmy O'Rourke in it as well. They're unbelievable. So yeah. Um, anyway, apart from anything, apart from anything else, yeah, um, there's some great performances in that team of the week. Gabriel has a look at it all and and throws in a, a, a few there that you, some you disagree with, some you agree with, but uh, no doubt about it. Ferguson. A stonewall certainty. The boy Hedges. Mm. Uh, just, I, I was going to talk about the boy Hedges, Alison, but just quickly, Tom, you were um, again being very, very positive uh, about Joe, Joe Newell. I like Joe Newell. I think he's got a great left yeah. leg on him. Oh, Peter, he was he was unbelievable on Saturday. It's the best I've seen him. You know, but while everybody else was always bobbling over their foot and you know miscontrolling it and misplaced passes, he was just he was he was so at home on that surface. You know, Cruyff turns dribbling by people as if they weren't there. He was he was sensational, and he's out of contract at the end of the season. I think the first season under Heckenbotham when he first came in, I think he yeah. struggled with the pace of the game up in Scotland, and uh, he was getting a lot of stick off the Hibs fans. But I tell you what, he's changed it all round. He's turned the opinion around of the Hibs supporters, and every single one of them, to a man and a woman, would want him to extend his stay at Hibs. So hopefully, it's one that Hibs can get tied up because he's been exceptional this season. Yeah, can he play centre half? Uh, probably could, probably could. But you, uh, Sarah, Sarah Midfield, you, you, you'll see him. You'll see him in the semi-final. He's a he's an excellent football. Just 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 just, just checking. There's somebody. There's a team on the lookout for a centre half at the moment. You never you never know. Anyway, apart from anything else, here's how the table looks. Um, uh, listen, when you look at it. Um, points on the board for me, Ali, always key in this one. Despite what happened last season. I think there's a steely determination about this Rangers side and they will love the look of that table. They'll love the look of the table, not just because of the, the points that separate them at the top, but if you have a look at the goal difference too, it's reflective of the fact that they're really not shipping an awful lot of goals. Now, at the minute, that's fairly irrelevant. When you're talking about a six-point gap, it, it, it's a bit of an irrelevance, but if it gets tighter, that actually comes into play too. But I also just think it's a a reflection of the season as a whole up until now, where Celtic have been scoring goals which just cannot be relied upon to, to keep them out at the other end. And it's it's something you, you have to turn it around. If, if you want to have any ambitions of going on and, and winning this 10th title, they need to turn it around immediately. It, ha it has to be a, a, a reversal uh, and, it, and it has to start from the next game. You have to start bringing some solidity in, in, into that back line. Well, it doesn't get any easier. They've got Lille coming up in the uh, Europa League. Uh, Gary McGurn says Peter Callum McGregor was a star man on Sunday and he never got a shout. Yeah, uh, Gary, I tend to agree with you. Yeah, quite well. McGreg yeah, I'd have put McGregor in, in, in front of uh, Rogic in the, the star team, but I didn't pick it. So it's always good to actually get someone else uh, to give us a wee thought on it as well. Uh, Kenny Whitson says, was Barkas injured or just dropped completely? They said he was injured, uh, Kenny, but uh, I think that was uh, an easy cop-out. He was one player I would have dropped along with Duffy uh, for Celtic um, before a ball was kicked. Um, so I think Neil Lennon was probably happy he had an injury because he does not look like a Celtic goalkeeper at the moment. What about the pundit scores? Our predictions? Here's how it all looks. Rough eight's getting tight. There it is. Woo -hoo -hoo! 
roughly a point behind me, but Tam still with that commanding 20-point lead at the moment. Uh, I mean, it's a commanding lead, but as you know, um, Tam usually has a wee holiday in January and then collapses. <laughs> as simple as that. We'll soon find out if that's as the case. As soon as I sign a contract, uh, Peter, that's me. I'm, I'm all that. <laughs> Exactly. That's what me and Robbie are hoping for anyway. <laughs> or, 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 you could, or, or you could be released. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even expect that. Yeah. Oh, Cheers, or you, Ruffy. Or you, could, yeah, or you could get a better offer somewhere else. Kiss the bag. Yep. You never know, Tam. It's happened before. That's all I'm telling you. Um, Gary McGurn says, Peter Marcus was hurt against Milan when Duffy crashed into him. <laughs> you couldn't make that up. <laughs> you couldn't make that up. I, I can't even. I can't even remember if that was the case. But nevertheless, anyway, that's the score. The third goal. Uh, just a quick third goal. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Um, mm. So there you are. I can't. We, we can't blame him for everything. I mean, I'm sure Shane Duffy's going to be uh, to blame if uh, Donald Trump gets re-elected. Um, but to be perfectly honest, when it's game of football, his confidence is low. Can he turn it around? Who knows? Only time will tell. But right now. Um, you know, the Rangers fans on this programme, uh, certainly on our Facebook, uh, are high uh, as a kite about it, in a good place. Um, and we wait to see if there are any further twists and turns. There's Europa League football to look forward to as well. There's two cracking semi-finals that we'll be discussing. Uh, just before we go, as far as down south is concerned, um, Brendan Rodgers, a happy man, Ruffy. Uh, Jamie Vardy popping up with an absolute cracker of a goal. Brendan Rodgers reckons he's world-class. Do you agree with him? Uh, not world class, but I can see him doing a, a job for one of the top teams in, in England, and I'm surprised they haven't pushed the boat out to acquire him. They obviously all know, must know he's worth and what he can do. So I, I would have thought a top five club should be maybe having a go at him. Yeah, uh, it was a good goal he scored, uh, Tam, to win it for Arsenal, eh, for Leicester, sorry. Yeah, no, he's, he's, a, he's a top player. He's been really consistent uh, for Leicester over the last couple of seasons. He's came up through the hard way. You know, he's came from non-league, he's very hungry, he's still got that same hunger in his play, even though he's probably on over 100 grand a week, he doesn't play like it, he plays as if he's on a tenner a week, so I think that's a good sign for any striker, you know, that hunger, he keeps going goals, and uh, no, he's, he's been brilliant, and, and Brendan Rodgers is top class, there's no doubt about that for me, I know he left under a cloud at Celtic, but I think, I sh I think many of them would, would take him back tomorrow, to be honest. Yeah, um, just a, a quick one before we go then, Alison. St Mirren have made a couple of appointments, basically a couple of experienced people to try and come in and guide St Mirren through this difficult COVID uh, situation because, if anything, they've missed two games. It's getting rather worrying. I'm sure they're doing everything they possibly can uh, to try and monitor and track and trace and, and take everybody's temperature and, and monitor where they're going. But... What can you do? I mean, you know, two additional people to look over it and make sure it's all been done according to plan won't make a blind bit of difference if somebody just contracts it either from fellow players or somebody they're in connection with. I think it's hugely difficult. I think, too, once it's in the club, once it's in your surroundings, the, the, the nature of it or what we're led to believe is the nature of it is how hugely contagious it is. And I, I think it's... Once you have players who have come into contact with it and then trying to establish where they, who else they have come into contact with, I think there's a real domino effect in the manner in which it goes through the club. We saw the same same thing going on at Kilmarnock. I think players have been so used to it now. This has been going on for, for the best part of three or four months that they must know themselves that the, the, the protocols are stringent, that you have to try and, and stay within your bubble as much as humanly possible. But... They're, they're human, they have lives, they, they have partners who go out to work, they all have children who, who go to school and are coming into contact with, with so many other kids and then are coming back in. They're, they're, they have to go and buy shopping, you have to put petrol in your car, you have to do all the day-to-day the -day things that, that we all have to do. I think it's hugely difficult once it's in the club to try and just stop the, the, the spread of it. It's obviously vital that everyone has had adhering to, to protocols um, but I think what you can say is that as a club I'm not sure that they could do any more yeah, absolutely. Uh, great words to finish. As you can tell, by the way, when we're getting close to the end, uh, Ruffy's lights go out, which is why he is in complete <laughs> darkness and everybody else. Uh, it looks as if they're ready for a professional show. Uh, it's great. Can I hear him? 
Well, not only we couldn't hear him at the start, and we certainly have been given a blessing from God. We can't hear him at the end of the program either. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and follow us on our Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's a program where, quite simply, we've had Neil Lennon, we've had Derek McInnes, we've had Kenny Dalglish, Alex McLeish, Gary McAllister, Jermaine Defoe, Jack Ross, Stephen Robinson. We've had opinion, we've had a bit of laughs, and we've had more than a few people telling us where the league title is going to end up on our Facebook Live feed. If you want to join in with Scotland's best football, show join us if you can join the football family subscribe on our youtube channel like share and follow but from tam allison and a darkened ruffy and myself peter martin <laughs> thanks for watching <laughs>